and I was the youngest person to do so. I was determined to let Wallace see what he had done to me. For a number of years, the Negro passengers on the city bus lines of Montgomery have been humiliated, intimidated, and faced threats on this bus line. Just the other day, uh, one of the fine citizens of our community, Mrs. Rosa Parks, was arrested because she refused to give up her seat for a white passenger. Mrs. Rosa Parks was arrested and taken down to jail, taken from the bus, just because she refused to give up her seat. At present, we are in the midst of a protest, the Negro citizens of Montgomery, representing some 44% uh, of the population. 90% at least of the regular Negro bus passengers are staying off the buses, and we plan to continue until something is done. Although many have been arrested, we continue, listen to me, we continue our protest, for none of our actions have been found illegal. The carpool and all we have done in this struggle continues. Prior to the Civil War, free blacks in the North were primarily not given the right to vote because they were considered second-class citizens. After the Civil War ended in 1865, Congress enacted the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which gave black males citizenship and recognized their right to vote. Once these laws were enacted, Union troops were sent to the South to control and oversee the Reconstruction. During Reconstruction, voting rights were upheld, great lengths the, the Union Army, the Union government, really, um, went to great lengths to guarantee blacks had the right to vote and to run for office. African Americans were given the right to vote, and in many communities they did start voting. You have several people elected blacks, elected into state and local positions, and even your first federal congressman came during Reconstruction. Once Reconstruction ended, that stopped they created a number of different, what we would call, loopholes. These loopholes included harsh restrictions such as poll taxes, grandfather clauses, and literacy tests. These made it nearly impossible for African Americans to vote. When blacks came, tried to come to vote, you had them getting killed over that, or, or beaten up, or lynched, or what have you. And it was more than just politics. It was a way of making, of making sure that blacks were kept in a second class status. This harsh injustice lasted many years. However, around the turn of the 20th century, influential leaders such as Booker T. Washington and W.B. Du Bois began to make slow progress in civil rights. Finally, during the 1950s and 60s, African Americans rallied together to form what is now known as the Civil Rights Movement. Civil rights became such an issue and it was gaining support not just in the black community but in a large segment of the white community that it couldn't be ignored any longer. In 1965, President Lyndon B. Johnson pushed Congress into enacting legislation concerning voting rights. He felt like it was the President's job to spearhead a betterment of society. And he felt like denying a large segment of the population precious rights like the right to vote was unacceptable. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 gave the federal government power to regulate state voting issues and laws. This has given African Americans and other minorities an opportunity to partake in American democracy. I think we forget just how much power we wield, and with that one vote, each one, you have more, uh, 
vulnerable black persons, black men and women in positions of power. Although segregated seating on buses and in stations was outlawed in 1960, many places still would not allow people of different races to sit together. So, a daring group of civil rights workers decided to ride around the United States to test the law. You would think riding a bus together would be easy, but some people did not like the idea of racial equality. Their buses were attacked and burned, they were searched, beaten up, and arrested. Martin Luther King said this about how their brave, nonviolent action was reacted to by some authorities. Never in the history of this nation have so many people been arrested for the cause of freedom and human dignity. But the freedom riders persisted. They kept on riding and their bravery ushered in the next stage of civil rights, which insisted that people follow the law and respect the rights and freedoms of all. Decision that changed it all. In 1954, Oliver Brown was upset because his daughter, Linda Brown, was denied access into all, an all-white school in Topeka, Kansas because of the color of her skin. The issue turned into court trials that ended up in the Supreme Court. Thurgood Marshall was the Brown family's representative, and Chief Justice Earl Warren was the Supreme Court judge. Look for God when you're trying to fight the odds. Need to look up to the sky and let go of all the pride. The game changing, we trying to make arrangements and let go of that anger. Put that food into our brain instead, aiming steady at the youth. We trying to change culture. New leaders, we ain't coming from that same hoster. Been in that heat of the moment, we from that same toaster. Emotions rolling, just know I've been on that same coaster. That fame heavyweight to carry up to heaven's gates. Know that heat rise. The devil gotta levitate, we elevate. Son, no hesitate. Son, we was born to lose, but we gon' get it done. I see sounds in my mind I hear colors as I go We all walk side by side Even if we're on a different road I know Cause this is something bigger than us This is something bigger than us This is something bigger than us I see the world from a lens of my own perspective And see the anger driven by color in the recession Sad to see the reality of our regression Cops killing, drug selling in a state of a depression When I get pulled over, should I be afraid? Cause lately the bad's getting away If my attitude bad cause of the day Would it threaten them enough where I maybe could catch a stray? But it's a two-way street, you probably hate to hear It kinda seem like they striking cause it be out of fear Aggressive kids getting bullets, then they be out of here We mourning lately, gonna be some time for we out of tears No need to separate, remember that these times cooler We ain't dealing with segregation for all the schoolers Throwing dirt on the work of Malcolm and Martin Luther We stand together, let's make it different than what we used to I see sounds in my mind I hear colors as I go We all walk side by side Even if we're on a different road I know Cause this is something bigger than us This is something bigger than us This is something bigger than us Is something bigger than love We compliment one another Just like the colors of a rainbow We'll paint the world with our colors And everyone will know 
God created us equal, so let's embrace it In life you run into evil, you gotta face it Let's win the race instead of everybody thinking racist Bad habits we inflated, look what we created We need change, better attitudes to open up lanes Better avenues, need to rise up, but we headed latitude Let's try to think about the kids bred after you Every day I wake up and see the breaking news About the hate crimes, media gon' make you choose Which side you gon' support so they get rates and views Now people shooting up reporters cause they hate the crews We the people gotta love one another Let it be known, with nothing undercover Let's take control of the future Instead of letting it hover everybody to the table Make sure you bring us something Richard Walker recounts the events by stating, There are cars that are driving up and down the road, honking their horns, waving homemade anti-busing signs that say things as, Honk if you're against busing. And they're waving their fist. They're waving American flags upside down. Police are in the area. About 20 feet away from me, there's a dumpster that has been set on fire. About a block away, there's another dumpster that has been set on fire at the side of the road. Over time, the, the riots eventually calmed, but the issue of busing never really went away. In fact, it still remains in Louisville today, but under a different name called the Student Assignment Plan. This plan is a continued attempt to keep schools desegregated, and though the schools are indeed diverse, the issue of busing remains and probably will until another idea comes along to resolve it. That my four little children one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream.